Mike here, uh, making a new primary motive nozzle. I um, haven't ran the machine here in a while, went on vacation for a little bit. This was the original primary motive nozzle. Uh, this thing actually injects refrigerant down into the, uh, the ejector here, which is this assembly here. So the tip's actually pointing right into the, uh, the throat, uh, actually a little bit past the horizon of the throat into the uh, mixing chamber here. Um, had good success with it. I've seen uh, pressure differences as high as 10 psi. Uh, I don't know how good that is for an ejector system, but um, you know I'm operating at about 250 psi on the high side, um, say about 90 pounds on the low side, and then uh, about 100 pounds on my medium pressure here. So I'm doing about 10 psi of, of compression. So anyway, um, I'm actually getting ready to change over. I had a uh, water-cooled condenser there and I'm going to be swapping back for the air-cooled condenser while I focus on the ejector. Have some more uh, stable system uh, system pressures. So what I wanted to do, as you can see this uh, first nozzle here, it is actually three pieces of copper. There's a three-eighth inch piece of uh, copper tubing, a quarter inch piece, and a small piece of capillary tubing. I'm not exactly sure what the diameter is on it, but uh, relatively small. It just happened to be what I had laying around. And the length of that cap tubing is about, uh, about a centimeter long. Um, you see I braced all these pieces together. I kind of hammered down and reduced the diameter on the 3 8 also on the quarter inch so I could get a pretty good fit for the brazing. Um, the uh, 3 8 isn't actually pressurized. Uh, the quarter inch is the only piece that's pressurized. The 3 8 is actually just there to uh, take up some of the space. The annulus in the uh, in the half inch pipe to keep the cross sectional area relatively small and the velocity of the refrigerant as it goes into the ejector high. Um, so on that on that point, um, what I wanted to do here today, experiment and make a slightly different style. So you can see this half inch cap, which is the convergent nozzle. This isn't the one I'm using. This is the first model, but it's very similar. Um, the, uh, it, it actually reduces rather quickly, and this does not. So, what uh, you know, I have a theory. Uh, the cross-sectional area is actually increasing dramatically right before it actually goes into the throat. And uh, I want to experiment with different styles of of uh, primary motor nozzles, but this was just something fun that I wanted to try to do, just to make one that uh, uh, ends rather abruptly. So that's what we have here. This piece of three eighths, and you can see that it uh, just curls over pretty quickly. And then there's a very, very small orifice there. It's not cap tubing; it's actually quarter-inch tubing in the center. And uh, I think it's about what did I say? It was about 20 or 22 gauge. So I'm not exactly certain what the exact diameter is. I'll figure that out in time. That's just uh, based on using a uh, uh, set of torch tip cleaners as the diameter. Uh, I think it's gauge as well, but uh, I'll, I'll figure that out here in a little bit. Um, so what I did here to make this is uh, actually a, kind of a learning process. I wanted to take a piece of quarter inch pipe and reduce it. And one of the methods I could have used, and I tried it at first, was just bash it until it's pretty, which is what uh, happened to this piece of half inch pipe. It's not that pretty, but uh, it's a learning process. But the problem is to uh, work with a piece of quarter inch pipe and get down to the, a controllable diameter, that's difficult. So what I actually did with this piece, this was my first piece I experimented with, I uh, <clears throat> actually I pinched that with this. It's a uh, vice grips, uh, they're actually used for, for pinching, I think these are yellow, yeah, yellow jacket, uh, these are for pinching uh, uh, copper lines. Uh, yellow jacket, so it's probably refrigeration lines, and that's what I use them for. Um, normally, though, you're just crimping on one side, and you smash it. Well, what I did was actually, I put this in the vise, tried this a few different ways, clamp the, this in the vise, and then put the quarter-inch pipe down in the throat, right there at the bottom, and then uh, just set it so that I just crimp it ever so slightly, and then open it up, turn the pipe, and crimp again, and just keep working that as I spin the pipe around and then you know close it down go a little tighter a little tighter spin 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 tight 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 spin 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 anyway um, I was able to get that there you can see it
pretty small. Now the other thing I wanted to do, um, I didn't want to just reduce the diameter, but I actually wanted to also taper the divergent nozzle a little bit. And the reason for that is uh, I want to make sure that the, the refrigerant stream that exits is, uh, isn't too turbulent coming out. I want to make sure it's good and linear as it goes crosses the horizon into the, uh, the throat mixing ch uh, region of the, the ejector. Um, easier said than done. Um, actually, I did reduce this one a little bit, but uh, it's nowhere close because the final exit, I wanted it to be yeah, maybe three times the throat diameter or something like that. Um, so it wasn't going to work. I think what I might do later on <clears throat> is uh, take a piece of uh, larger bore capillary tubing and restrict it a little bit at one point and uh, <clears throat> that will help me get a little closer to the shape that I desired. Um, this doesn't really help too much but this was a piece that I reduced the end but that is essentially what's in the end of the piece that I'm working with now. I reduced a piece a quarter inch like that and then I uh, hacked off a little bit of the end. It's not doesn't come to a point, it actually comes to a point and then tapers out slightly. And I took a piece, of, this is an experimental piece, a piece of 3 eighths, and I reduced it a bit and then cut it off, slid the quarter inch up inside uh, until it was pretty close and then very carefully tried to braise the seam without plugging up, this won't focus, uh, without plugging up the, uh, the orifice, which is difficult. Uh, I ended up actually kind of cleaning it out a little bit with a torch tip cleaner. Um, till I could blow a stream of, of fluid through it that was relatively straight. Um, so I'm actually getting ready to try this out. I got to put the system back together. Um, the one thing I didn't like about the first primary motive nozzle, <clears throat> and I might have to rely on this, I used a compression fitting. Now, the problem is, and I've talked about this previously, is once that ferrule goes on there, <clears throat> it ain't gonna move. It's pretty well uh, clamped into that brass or that copper there and it's not going to slide anymore. I don't know of any way to uh, to make it move because I'd like to actually be able to change the depth down in there. Um, so what I have on here, it's actually kind of jammed in there a little bit right now. There it is. It's a Delrin sleeve. I'm not exactly sure. It's probably for water fittings. Um, I've tried this and actually tightened it up a little bit and I don't know if it's going to seal. I'm going to find out here tonight, hopefully. Uh, I did put a little bit of an impression into the copper um, so we're gonna we're gonna wait here and find out. So um, I'm not that confident this is gonna work all that successfully. I've, I've reduced my uh, diameter for the primary mode of nozzle, um, so there's gonna be a difference there. And plus the whole shape of the nozzle is different, so there's gonna be a difference there. Um, so it's gonna be hard to tell what exactly worked. But I'm just fooling around, having some fun. That's usually what I do. Um, what I may end up doing here in the future is making something a little more similar to this in that it uses capillary tubing, but I will try to uh, end it more uh, abruptly, like this piece here, having a small tip like that extending out through um, and extending beyond the horizon of the uh, throat into the mixing chamber, mixing area. Um, my only concern, my, my major concern with this is that the divergent portion there, as small as it is, is at such a sharp angle um, that it's not going to, the, the fluid's actually going to hold, you know, imagine if it was like that. It's actually going to kind of hold to the inside wall and uh, expand rapidly and maybe it won't uh, inject as, as, as well into the throat. You know, it's hard to tell. I'm not going to actually be able to know exactly what's going on in there. I just have to infer. But, um, you know, even if this, this method doesn't work out that well, or if over time the liquid actually erodes the uh, orifice open, uh, which is, I think, a possibility. That's a nice view there. Um, yeah, you know, I'll definitely learn something from working with copper like this. It's, it's tedious, but uh, it can be enjoyable, and uh, these methods can be applied to, uh, you know, future issues. So, anyway, thanks for watching.